Hi, everyone. In section 0.5, let's now talk about laws of radicals, which are related to the laws of exponents because you can always rewrite a radical as a power with an exponent. Now, we're going to assume here that we're dealing with real valued expressions. Uh, so for example, if we consider the cube root of negative one, that's fine because the principal cube root of negative one is negative one. The cube of negative one is negative one. That's fine. Negative one is a real value. However, negative one does not have real square roots. The principal square root of negative one we call i, but that's not real. That doesn't count. <laughs> so we're not allowing things like the square root of negative one, or for that matter, the fourth root, the sixth root, the eighth root, any even root of a negative value. We're not allowing those now. For now, we're keeping it real. So the square root of negative one, no good. Cube root of negative one, odd root of a negative value, that's still fine. All right. Law number nine. The square root of xy equals the square root of x times the square root of y. Or one way to look at this, it's easier to read it in reverse. So for example, the square root of two times the square root of three does equal the square root of six. That does work out. If you don't believe me, square both sides and see what happens. So the product of roots does equal the root of the product. Of course, we're dealing with the same roots here, square roots. Although this also works with cube roots or fourth roots. The product of roots equals the root of the product. X, uh, so going in reverse, the square root of x times the square root of y equals the square root of x times y. That does work. And it works this way as well. Likewise, if we divide both sides by the square root of three, let's say, right? well, these cancel out. Root three divided by root three is one. Right? And we get that root six divided by root three, the right-hand side here, equals the left-hand side, root two. Root six divided by root three is root two. When you divide roots, you divide the radicands. The quotient of the roots equals the root of the quotient. The quotient of the roots equals the root of the quotient. This works out cleanly. Root x over root y equals root x over y. Another way to look at it, the radical breaks up, both for the square root of a product or a quotient, the square root of a product breaks up like so, the product, sorry, the square root of a quotient breaks up like so. You share the radical. So if you're taking the radical of a product or a quotient, you can share the radical across the factors or across the top and the bottom. However, This does not apply to the radical of a sum or a difference. So in general, the square root of x plus y is not in general equivalent to the square root of x plus the square root of y. The radical does not break up over sums or differences in general. So this, so uh, don't be deluded into thinking that. For example, consider the square root of, let's consider a counterexample to the conjecture that this is true, all right? Let's say a student naively thought that this was true, all right? Then you're claiming that the square root of one plus four is equal to the square root of one plus the square root of four. On the left side, we have the square root of five, the square root of one, the principal square root of one is one, plus the principal square root of four is two. Well, folks, is the principal square root of five equal to three 
is the square of three five? Is three the square root of five? No. No good. That's really no good. <laughs> no good. Our conjecture here is false. It's not a theorem. Because we found a counterexample where x equals one, y equals four, the conjecture failed. The conjecture was false. So radicals break up over products and quotients, but not over sums or differences for that matter. Be careful. It's often the case that we can do things with products and quotients, but not sums or differences. All right. That's also true for exponents. Number 11, we're not going to worry so much about. Um, an example of this is the cube root of the square root of x is the sixth root of x. Ultimately, you can get this from the laws of exponents and relating exponents and radicals, but don't worry so much about number 11. Next up, we're going to talk about how to unravel radicals using powers or exponents. That's next time.